Fiber optic cabling is one of those things that oozed its way into the IT industry. I mean, think about it. This cable type has been around since the 1970s, but it's only been within the last decade that you started seeing it as like, oh, hey, that, that's a fiber cable over there. And for a while, when I was getting into fiber, I'm like, ah, oh, it's for the fiber guys, you know, because there's always those guys that come in and take care of the fiber optic cabling. But now it's commonplace, and now we need to know how to work with it. Once you get what I'm about to walk you through, fiber cabling will be a piece of cake. The first thing to catch is that there's two major types of cable out there, single mode fiber and multi-mode fiber. You'll see them abbreviated like this in technical documentation when you're buying cables online at the store, SMF, MMF. And one of the things that I love is that the cable manufacturers stayed true to the coloring. Most of the time, the single mode fiber, if you're just looking at it hanging from a rack, will be yellow, whereas multi-mode fiber will be aqua or orange. It makes it really easy to visually identify. You can think of multi-mode fiber as the common man's cable. You'll see this in a single building all over the place because it's used typically to connect switches to switches over longer distances. You might know that ethernet cable runs about 100 meters before you have attenuation, whereas this stuff ends up going about 300 to 500 meters, at least in the multi-mode world. That variance really depends on the speed that you're trying to run over it. 10 gigabits per second pushes you closer to the 300 meters, whereas one gigabit per second can run a little further. Single mode fiber, on the other hand is a thin glass core, which means it usually takes a little more expertise to work with. Now, I'm not saying that you can't touch one of these cables. I'm thinking about when I when I uh, was training uh, a network guy on site, um, I, I said, oh, that's single mode fiber. And he was carrying it like, you know, this this uh, small rabbit with a broken leg in his hand. He's like, I can't, yeah, I can't bend it or I can't touch it. I mean, it's it, you can see it's, it's coiled right there. It's not just gonna, you know, snap on demand by looking at it, but it usually takes a little more sophisticated equipment to work with. I'll talk about that in just a second. These guys are more expensive and go a longer distance to the tune of 10 to 40 kilometers, again, depending on how much speed you're sending across this. You usually find this cable between buildings, like on a college campus or something where you've got a really long distance going between buildings, or you'll see the carriers running single mode fiber under the streets. Now, the beauty of fiber optic cable is that you can repeat it limitlessly. As the signal begins to fade, you can inject a little powered device that regenerates the signal another 40 kilometers and farther and farther and farther we go. If you want to dig into something really interesting, Google transatlantic fiber optic runs and you start seeing the technology that they use to run fiber optic cabling across the ocean to connect the continents. Well, my guess is that most of you don't have a wetsuit on and want to stay on the mainland where most network cabling happens. So let's talk about the fiber connections. Big picture, first of all. We've got buildings, right? That as they grow larger and larger, you move from having a single MDF, which is a main distribution facility. It's where all of your network equipment is stored and all of your connections terminate into having one or more IDFs. That's an intermediate distribution facility because it just becomes disadvantageous to run all the network cabling to one point in the system. So you'll install multiple rooms with network switches and that's usually where you see your first fiber optic cable runs is the MDF to IDF connections or when you grow an organization to where they have multiple buildings on the same campus, like I think of a college campus, and you start saying, okay, well, this building needs a network room. Obviously, we're not gonna run all the computers, uh, cables in this room back to the MDF in building number one. So you'll set up an IDF here, right? And run fiber optic cabling through conduit underground to the MDF up here. Now, when I say you'll run, that's usually where the fiber specialists come in, right? You hire a company to come out where they bring spools of cable rather than pre-crimped cable, if you will. And they'll take their typically single mode fiber and run it from a box like this. They'll, they'll take one end right here and punch it into the backside of this fiber patch panel and then take this, fish it through the conduit and then on the other end, cut it off and splice it together. If you've never seen this in real life, cancel the trip to Disneyland. Europe can wait. Go follow a fiber optic cabling company and watch it. It's amazing. I'm gonna show you the next best thing. Uh, well, it's sitting on YouTube. So go on YouTube and, and look for a fiber splice. So this organization, hang on, let's, uh, so, okay, equipment. Over here, this is a fiber splicer. Usually two to probably twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 for that device, depending on how sophisticated it is. This, hey, he's grabbing it right there, uh, is a fiber cutter. So it's actually going to cut the fiber optic cable. Hang on, let me, let me uh, fast forward a little bit. 
Uh, so, hang on, man. Yeah, alcohol, you know, say, okay, well, hang on. Move, hand, move. No, okay, right there, you see it? It's as thin as a human hair. That's single mode fiber that he's working with right there. So he just went and cut it, and he's putting one side of it in the fiber splicing equipment. You gotta see this, hang on. Let me fast forward, fast forward. Okay, that's the other side. That's the other, he wants to join these two fiber optic cables, right? Uh, and I'm telling you, I saw this in real life the first time, I almost passed out. Um, and I'm, 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 you know, my legs are getting a little shaky right now. So, okay, hang on, hang on, what's he doing? Uh, so he's put the two pieces in there, and he slowly moves them together. You know, the, the screen is showing the instruction. And it's, it gets to a certain point, then you let go of the cable and the machine takes over where it starts aligning these cables. See how they're kind of off a little bit? It's like, bump, 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 bump. you hear it, ta, 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 ta. and it moves it up a little higher and then joins it together. Okay, hang on, hang on, hold your breath. <laughs> and that's, oh, that was awesome. And that you can actually see that. I mean, you don't actually see lights and fire or anything like that coming out of the device, but it joins the two ends of the cable together and it's like, bing, little toaster oven. Now you've got a spring. Come on, that was awesome. Now you've got a spliced fiber optic cable. Now everything you just saw right there is usually handled by a professional fiber optic cabling company where they have people that that's all they do is fish fiber cable through conduit and splice it together. And their end typically ends right here. They run it to the back of the patch panel and network engineers pick up with these connections, right? And that's where these connectors come into play. Now, first and foremost, fiber optic cabling is not like ethernet where it's all bundled together in one cable. Every fiber run will have a receive and a transmit cable that's brought together in one connection. So you see on all these different connector types, you see one wire, one wire, one wire, one wire. That's the receive and transmit pair. Now, looking at these tips, there's none that I would say, oh, that's the best one. There's different best ones for different situations. And I'll frankly tell you, the best one is whatever the cabling company decided to use on that right there, because you have to go buy that. This is almost always used in a fiber patch panel. It's one of the types, and that's actually what what I would assume is used right there because they have twist lock grips to where you can get a patch panel with, or I should say a, a fiber cable with this end right here that you screw on to the patch panel and that cable will run down and have a different end on the other side, such as this, that plugs into the switch itself. So zooming in, you've got your MDF right here. If we were to look inside of that room, you would have uh, the network rack sitting right here. The fiber cable would be run by the professional company into a tray that's typically mounted into the rack at the top or something like that. And you take a cable from that patch panel and run it down to your actual switch sitting in that rack. So I'm going to take you over to one of my favorite uh, cabling sites where I buy cable from. It's monoprice.com. And you can see you could go in and buy an LC to ST patch cable, right? And there's our lengths, one meter, two meters, three meters. And you can see the price goes up slightly you know, all the way down to uh, a 10 meter cable. But you can see on one side of the cable are those twist lock connectors. And on the other side is this LC connector, which usually plugs into the switch itself. Now you can see down here on the switch that you have these SFP that stands for small, oh, what is it? Small form pluggable uh, modules that you can go uh, buy these and have different kinds of, of connections. For instance, there's an ethernet cable. There's the LC. These are very popular for plugging into a switch because they're the smallest. You'll see some switches that have SC connectors, but those are usually the older ones. These three types are usually found in patch panels. So again, you look at the patch panel, determine what kind that end needs. You go buy that to the LC connector, which ends up connecting to the switch itself. Now, I'm gonna drop back here. I'm just gonna click on this fiber optic cables and you can see there's all of the different times. These are the categories, right? They're saying ST to ST, multi-mode. ST to SC, multi-mode. SC, to, I mean, you see. So they're taking all of these different tips and giving you options of what kind of combination you have. So LC to LC are very common because this usually is your switch to switch connections where if you want to connect two switches together and you don't have a patch panel, buy two LC ends. You see as I scroll down, I move from multi-mode into single mode fiber and there's all the different connector types that you have over on the left hand side. Now, you know, you're saying, well, Jeremy, what about all these ones down here? Those are weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are. There's always people trying to develop new standards, new ways of doing this that's more efficient, that's less problematic. For example, one of the big problems that you end up with these cables is you have a receive and transmit connection, right? They end up getting swapped to where uh, receive on one side matches.
matches up to receive on another side, right? And it doesn't work. You want receive to match to transmit and transmit to match to receive. That's what allows, it's kind of like a positive negative relationship and allows the devices to talk. So one thing that's always happening is these things end up mismatched. And so they develop new cable types that say, hey, you're, you're not gonna be able to mismatch these things because it's, you know, locked into place. That being said, these connector types are not mainstream. At least as I'm talking to you right now, they're more proprietary. Before we leave, I want to come back to this slide and address this comment that I'm sure many of you were looking at going, what's he talking about? I put it on there so I wouldn't forget to tell you and I, I totally forgot. So a fun game is to crack the cable, meaning a lot of people wonder, well, just how much can I bend these things before the fiber optic cable cracks? I would say, try it. You can see those cables have become commoditized to where it's, you know, eight bucks for a patch cable from, uh, you know, monoprice.com. So go, well, or 26. So go, go buy one of those cables or take an old one from the uh, room that you're replacing and bend this thing. You'll, you'll find that you can actually bend it pretty far, but put it right next to your ear and it goes pop. I started, I started uh, passing cables around when I uh, taught in classroom environments and students would do that. And, and then there was this one guy who took the, the cable and like crumpled it in his hand like a, a wadded up paper. And you would you could actually hear it go K -k 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 -k. And, and it was like, you know, you're like, oh man, it's like the guy who gets the bubble wrap and jumps on it and pops all the bubbles so no one else can have fun. So it's fun to do this because you can see how far you can bend this thing because there's a lot of times you're fishing it through the rack and you're like, oh man, I know I totally killed it. They actually will be able to bend quite a bit.